Hello, everyone. Today's poem is "Wei Feng Shuo Ren" by Yi Ming, a Wei Wind poem from the Book of Sounds. The title "Shuo Ren" means a giant, a very big person. Well, the real meaning, especially in the time of Book of Sounds. Means a person with the best qualities, either her outlook or her virtue. So this almost identical to the character of Mei. Today, when we talk about Mei, is beautiful or Mei Ren is a beauty. But in the time of Book of Sounds, is almost identical to the term Shuo, which. Uh, both of them, Shuo and Mei, means big, a, a big, a giant person. So、uh, that's the man side of the ancient Chinese. So anything big is good. It's beauty. It's of beauty. This poem is very very special poem. In the Chinese classic poetry, because it's one of the two poems in the Book of Sounds that、uh, establish the vocabularies and the styles how to describe a beauty, a great person. The other one is also in the Wei Wind, which is Qi Yu, to praise. To describe the Lord of Wei, and this one is about the wife of the Lord of Wei State. The vocabularies to describe a person used in these two poems are still very, very popular. Even a lot of the Chinese they didn't has. Uh, go through these two points. They still know those vocabularies to describe a beautiful woman, to describe a great、uh, person, a great lord. When we're learning these two points, the focal point is the vocabularies to describe a person. How the vocabularies is about? How the vocabularies? Was originated, created, and uh, the, actually, the other part of the poet is not so relevant or unfamiliar to most of the people. Actually, the beauty described in this poem was believed to be a real historical figure, Xuanjiang. In fact, there are some. History record and history stories about Xuanjiang as well, but from my point of view, it's really、uh, so hard or it's impossible to relate the beauty in this poem to a real history figure because we are lack of the. Uh, record about this point about the history uh, uh, figures in the real history. This poem is about a royal marriage between two states, the Qi state and the Wei state. And this poem, the general idea about this poem is, it describes the wedding ceremony, the Bride was on her way to her husband's state, the Wei state. Now let's look at the poem. Shuo Ren Qi Qi, Yi Jiong Jiong Yi. The girl was such a tall girl. She wears the colorful, finest silk dress, neatly and tightly. If we translate the first sentence, that big person was such a tall girl. So you can see in the ancient Chinese, the bigger the better, the taller the 
more beautiful. So that's the mindset of the Asian Chinese. And the yi jian, the first yi, it's a verb. It means wearing,、uh, a clothes. And the second yi is a noun. So jiong means wear the clothes tightly. Okay, let's continue. Qi hou zhi zi, wei hou zhi qi. It that beauty was the daughter of the、uh, Qi law, Lord of Qi, and that beauty was the wife of the Lord of Wei. So from here we know it's the relationship between the Qi state and Wei state. 东宫之妹，邢侯之仪，唐宫为私。She was the sister of the prince of the Qi state. She was the sister of the wife of the lord of Xing. She was the sister of the wife of the lord of Tang state. So all these. Relationships actually emphasize how noble and how decent this girl was. Especially the first sentence, Dong Gong Zhi Mei, the sister of the prince, because in the ancient China, the lord or the king has several wives. Only the first wife,、uh, the son from the first wife, could be the. Prince, prince, and、uh, here it refers this girl, this beauty. Actually, was from the first wife.、Uh, she was with the very decent, the most royal blood with her as the prince. When we look back to the first paragraph, it's a little bit boring because it repeating. A lot. Anyhow, just imagine this poem was written at least two thousand and five hundred years ago, and、uh, it's the first kind of this type of writing. It's very fresh to the people of that time, and、uh, it's creative. We should say. Also, this type of repeating. Gave us a very very strong positive sense, a very abundant sense, and actually this is the purpose by this poet, by this poet. Okay, the second paragraph. If you forgot everything about this poem, at least you should remember every words in the. Second paragraph. Almost every words is still quite、uh, common and popular words today to describe a beauty. So, just imagine if you saw a girl you like, you adore, use these words. Okay, the second paragraph. 手如柔仪，肤如凝脂。Her hands was just like the soft weeds. Her skin was just like the frozen oil. The two comparison actually means her fingers was long and slim. Her skin was very white and smooth. Be careful the. Frozen oil is the oil of animals, so it frozens in the normal temperature. It's white and it's very smooth. It's qu- quite often used in the classic Chinese to describe the skin of a woman. Let me give you some idea how important the vocabulary is in the second paragraph. It is. In modern Chinese, whenever you saw the term "rou yi," it means two things. First thing first, 
the finger, the hand, and secondly, the finger, the hand belongs to a beauty. It's a beauty's finger. It's a beauty's hand. So, even in the context, there is not a single word about a person, about a girl, about a woman, but just the two characters. Rui, you should realize something about a beauty, about her hand, and it's. The same、uh, to Ningzhi. So whenever you saw the term Ningzhi, it's about a beauty. It's about the、uh, white,、uh, smooth skin of a beauty. Even there's nothing、uh, implied in the context about a beauty, even about a. Girl about a woman. 领如求其，齿如护膝。Her neck was slim and long. Her teeth was neatly and white. 领 here is not color; it's the neck. 求其 is a a beetles in. A ch- in her, his childhood, with very long neck, so he, he com- parallels、uh, the beauty's long neck to the beetles. And the、uh, huxi is a type of mallow, and the, the seeds in it was very neatly arranged, and it's all shining white. The seeds, so it. it、uh, Compares the neck, the teeth, to one of the beetles and to one of the seeds of a type of mallow. 琴手峨眉，巧笑倩兮，美目盼兮。Her forehead was like that of a cicada. Her eyebrow was like the Tentacle of a silkworm moth. She smiles smartly and beautifully with her big eyes turning around. Qin was a kind of cicada. Here it compares the her forehead to the wide and round forehead of the cicada. And、uh, the tentacle of the mouse was very swiftly moved and very slim, so that was used to compare to her eyebrow, was very very slim and uh, very uh, swiftly, uh, smartly moving. So that makes a girl very lively and lovely as well, and.、Uh, The later two sentences, 巧笑倩兮，美目盼兮 is a very a dynamic、uh, gesture of that girl. So all the before descriptions is a still picture.、Uh, it's very beautiful, we should say, but it's still far from a beautiful、uh, and lovely girl. And、uh, later on in the Tang poetry, there is a sentence, 回眸一笑百媚生 So turning around, a, gl- a glance turning back,、uh, with a smile, it makes that、uh, girl the most beautiful. So it's far beyond、uh, beautiful with the turning around. Of a smile, so I think that's、uh, from this point. The, the, I mean, the idea and the 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 was borrowed from this point. Now we have go through the most important and beautiful part of this point. The first paragraph 
we learn the skill of repeating, and which help to make the sense abundant and very positive. And the second, we、uh, learned a lot of vocabularies, how to describe a、uh, beauty, and、uh, the dynamic gestures, the dynamic actions,、uh, actually makes that beauty more beautiful. 巧笑倩兮，美目盼兮。Or, 回眸一笑百媚生 That's the most beautiful moment of a beauty. For the rest of the two paragraphs, I will just read the paragraph and brief the meaning of it. 硕人嗷嗷，睡于浓娇，似目有娇，珠肺飘飘，涤服以朝，大夫速退，无使君劳。The beauty was very tall, and she parked her chariot in the suburb of Wei City. The chariot was with four strong horses with very beautiful decorations on the chariot. The officers were in of the Wei State when they saw the bride was coming. They just quit their office and、uh, let their lord, the Wei Lord, to have the time, to have the energy to welcome his bride. Now the fourth paragraph. 河水洋洋，北流蝈蝈，诗孤飘飘，毡尾波波。家坦阶阶，树江孽孽，树势有切。The Yellow River was full of waters, abundant of waters. It rushed to the north with a noisy sound. The Fishermen they put the fish net in the Yellow River, and the fishes was、uh, bouncing in the fish net with the sound of bo bo. Jadan, the weeds of the the young weeds in the spring was grows very prosperously. And all the other、uh, secondary brides was also very tall, and the、uh, man come with the bride was very brave. The fourth paragraph sounds very confused, right?、Uh, actually, it's not. It describes tell us the season. It's、uh, the early springs. And the frozen Yellow River actually melt down, so the water rush to the north with a lot of the icebergs、uh, with big noise, and the young weeds start to grow very prosperously, and the fishermen they、uh, idled for the whole winter, and they are very. Uh, eagerly uh, come down to the、uh, Yellow River to make their first harvest. So all the Yellow Rivers, the fishermen, the fishes, is telling us it's a very lovely, lively spring time, and it means new life. It means growth. And also, it's very closely related to the marriage in the Zhou Dynasty because the、uh, final、uh, goal or the ultimate、uh, goal for a marriage is to、uh, have more babies, have more sons, have more daughters, and all those sons, th- those daughters, will help to enhance the state 
to help to enhance the country. So that's all the uh, the the meanings for a marriage uh, for the Zhou people. In the last pair of sentence, I translate that as the second bride. So what is a secondary bride? So that's the marriage of the Zhou royal people. The brides actually consist of several brides, and uh, they're the first brides. When when she was married, she would become the first wife, and there are several other brides from the same family name, not from the same family, but they are from the same family name, and uh, they are cousins normally. So. All those girls was taken as brides, but with first and secondary brides. So the last pair of sentence, it's emphasize it's a very crowded, it's a very big、uh, wedding ceremony.、Uh, there are a bunch of secondary、uh, brides, and all of them are very tall, which means they are everybody is very. Beautiful, and uh, uh, they also send some of the people, male people, with the brides fr-、uh, from the bride's family. These people are very brave, so it's actually、uh, praise the people from the bride's family. In the last paragraph, all the scenic views, all the lively views, implies a very, very prosperous season, and the very, very prosperous season implies a very, very prosperous family by this marriage. And the last pair of sentence, the good girls, the good. Uh, per, pe,、uh, men from the bride's family, they all double enhance the prosperous family,、uh, which will do good actually to both family, to both state, the Wei state and the Qi state. Basically, that's the core value of the Zhou people. The marriage enhance the two state. The marriage is the foundation of the state. As far as the marriage have gave birth to a lot of the sons, to a lot of the daughters, those sons and daughters are the foundation of the state. So that's the value of the Zhou people. But for today's people,、uh, it's not like that anymore. And、um, but. The vocabulary is to describe the beauties still resides with Chinese today, and、uh, that's something imprinted to the Chinese literature and、uh, vocabularies. Okay, that's for today, and、uh, bye bye.